Thank you, Mark. Um, distinguished audience, dear friends, I see many friends here. Let me uh, firstly to share with you a memory. 20 years ago, in 1994, the mayor of Berlin invited uh, in Berlin a uh, few presidents, first Democrat president for Central and Southeastern Europe. While together with um, other democratic leaders, I was offered by the mayor of Berlin a small piece of what used to be the Berlin Wall, accompanied by an official certificate of authenticity. For many years, the fragment has been lying on my desk as a memento, and I often look at its sides. A vividly colored one and a gray one, a dull shade of gray, like broken cement. In uh, the evening, in uh, the year 1994, my German friends took me to the, the location of the former wall. I stayed there for a long time, and I tried to imagine, to imagine the world of the Cold War, the way it looked on the two sides of the wall. On one side, Western Berlin, shops filled with uh, merchandise, colored advertising boards along the street, luxurious cars, Atimus relaxed people. On the other, East Berlin, identical blocks of, of flats, gloomy people, barber wire. On one side of the wall, young people who used colored sprays to paint the wall, who sang and danced it during the exciting live rock concert, while on the other side, there were guards, armed patrols, and an empty field inhabited only by rabbits, such a sinister metaphor. From time to time, you could hear a machine gun rattling, and then a deadly silence. The Berlin Wall existed in reality. And those who dared to defy it and God should exist it as well. But the reverse trip also existed. The one going from reality to imagination. And for decades, the battles engaging the leaders of the communist regimes against the inner and outer rivers were waged in that imaginary space. A multitude of symbolic and archetypal values were transferred to the cement and iron wall. Therefore, in turn or simultaneously, it was perceived as wall of hostilities, which proclaimed the gap, the tight, but divided spaces, the self-seclusion, the rejection of the other, the victor's guilt, half of the European identity that God sacrificed, all that to construct a dictatorship, but also to provide the Democrat with a buffer of calm. A wall of autism and a wall of narcissism, both being two devastating forms of self-solitude. 
a wall of guilt and frustration. The suspicion of two walls keeping a watch on each other. Moreover, for all of us in the East, it is a pen that an animal tethered for too long will turn into empty space, an area of resignation, trampled intentions, dry, burnout project, where hope can be changed into a reflection and of non-involvement. Hope without pragmatism, a spineless pragmatism. The real cement and iron Berlin Wall collapsed, but it still exists in the European collective imagination, in our minds and souls. While for a long time it will go on affecting the conscience of the people in the West and in the East, either on the surface or deep down inside. I can still remember the overwhelming emotion we experienced when seeing the magnificent film of the Pink Floyd concert after the collapse of the wall. We, who had been listening to another brick in the wall broadcast by Gemet Radio. The sincere and spontaneous audience was vibrating with warm solidarity. What is also true is that in the meantime, on the other side of the wall, in East Berlin and Democrat Germany, the young generation were urged to move not by the joyous artistic experience, but by a deep feeling of freedom. The religious or natural songs they sang in the public squares came from their overwhelming faith. They were the scriptwriters, the producers, and also the actors of the revolutions, not only the enthusiastic witness of the fall of dictatorship. How many people have ever been granted the opportunity to experience within such a short span of time the chills of fear and the reckless manifestation of courage, terror, and freedom, suspicion, and trust. The newly discovered generosity, faith, and tolerance and above all, the feeling on living history life. The huge crowds that unexpectedly occupied the public squares in Berlin, Prague, Warsaw, Bucharest, Sofia, or Moscow, did not ask for land, jobs, salaries, or revenge but they acted with surprising solidarity for truth, freedom, faith, love for thy neighbor. For the numberless repressive communist forces proved to be weak and powerless. Contrary to what had been expected, the almost simultaneous collapse of the communist regimes covering Central Europe and reaching as far as Central Asia and the Pacific and North Oceans was not caused by any wars or blood shedding rebellions similar to the movement that brought them, them to power. Leaving aside Romania, that was a tragic exception. The process above took place peacefully. For a few months, mankind's everlasting ideals shed light on the 20th century, sustained 
with blood while awakened huge hope. Undoubtedly, my friends, 1989 will remain in history as one of those strange, charming, and rare years when people were ready to fight and die for an idea. Thank you.